Hi there, welcome to this video. This is Tina from TinaHills.com and today I'm speaking to you about an Aries Ascendant, a Virgo Moon and a Leo Sun. Very interesting. You have your Ascendant in Cardinal Fire, Yang. You have your Moon in Fall Position in the 6th. It is Mutable, it is Yin, it's Earth. And you have your sun in rulership in your fifth house of creativity. Uh, and uh, this is amazing. And you have a trine happening with your sun and your uh, ascendant. You know, trines happen in the same elements mostly. So this is quite amazing that you have this fixed fire energy happening in your sun, which is really which is going to make you very artistic you have your virgo moon which is which will be able to uh, look at detailing and completions and you are the fire starter the trailblazer the pioneer with your aries ascendant so the ascendant is the degree of the zodiac rising on the eastern side of the horizon at the moment of your birth okay and the sign on which it falls is your rising sign so when you walk into a room, people perceive you through the filter of your ascendant. Okay, they notice your ascendant first. It is the sum total of who you are. It is how you look, how you are uh, perceived by the world. Okay, so when you walk into a room with your uh, purposeful, airy stride, people can see that you're not afraid of eye contact. You can stare down an enemy stare down the competition you're not afraid to say it uh, how, uh, the way I say it how you feel say how you feel you're not afraid to you know raise your eyebrows and get into a conflicting situation or combative situation and why is that because your ruler is Mars the god of war and strife but Mars is not just about war and strife Mars is the action principle it is a chashakti. It is uh, the I do principle. So without Mars, we will not achieve anything, right? So it's very important to understand this this facet of Aries that it needs to explore. It needs to conquer, so to say. You're dominant. But you're not afraid to say it. And more so with your Leo Sun, your Virgo Moon may be conflicted and maybe more of an ambivert than an extrovert or an introvert, because Virgos can truly swing both ways. And in no sense, but uh, they can truly swing both ways. They can be great with people they are comfortable with, and then the next minute they they can completely tune off. If somebody walks into the room and they don't feel, they feel like uh, you know conflicted in any way so this is Virgo moon so you may not be uh, as gregarious or and as rambunctious say an Aries ascendant Leo sun Leo moon but you're definitely going to be more on the mellow side yet you are extroverted essentially because the sun is how you want the world to perceive you and the ascendant is how the world perceives you and both of this for you is fire Cardinal fire, fixed fire, but fire, extroversion, going the outward principle, okay? Now, so you have very well-defined facial features, very prominent eyes, very well-defined uh, nose, uh, sharp you know, Roman noses, high cheekbones, narrow um, you know, chin, maybe thinnish lips. You could have a harsh, edgy look in your eyes, which people could read as devoid of compassion. So be mindful of that. Other than that, you like to wear your hair short. Loads of Aries do, but you have sun and Leo. So maybe hair is more important to you than others. Another thing that you do is um, you just like to start new things, experience new things and uh, speak to new people and, and you know you're not afraid of any experience that could make you an adrenaline junkie of sorts be mindful of that aries rules the head 
It's your head is in focus. It's, it's how you look, your center, I've told you, but it's very important for you to remember that. Right, you have ruddy complexion. Red is probably one of your favorite colors. You like red lipstick, red highlights. Uh, Mars, after all, the red planet rules you. So uh, you could be more masculine than feminine. And you've got two masculine signs happening for you. So you could be more masculine. And that just means that you are, um, you have a lot of restless energy, a lot of, wanting to go out, wanting to meet people, but internally you are not ready always, but you just have to do it. It's, sometimes it becomes a compulsion to go out with displacement, Leo and Aries, okay? Uh, and uh, as I said that even if you're a female, you will have more testosterone, so working out is really good. Yoga is very good because Virgos are known as yoga bunnies. So that's something you can really take up and work within and be really good with that with your Virgo moon. Now, if you have any difficulties and you have a 6,000 moon and Virgo is your 6th house, so 6th house is the house of health. It's a malefic house like 3rd, 6th, 8th and 12th. So you have a 6,000 moon in Virgo, which could also mean you're given to a lot of hypertension, take care of your digestion. Any kind of issues like that can see you having, you know, 6th house in Mars and your 6th house cast. Could see you having like uh, hypertension, blood pressure, ENT issues, too much of hair burn, you know, hair can burn out with so much fire, brittle, thinness, alopecia. You can even wear glasses because you have power, ENT issues. Uh, also, you have to check for sensitive teeth and gums, migraines. For some, it is persistent acne. Okay, all of this. Another thing is that uh, you're so impulsive and so restless that, and it gets exacerbated during difficult transits of Mars or Pluto or Saturn, the, th the three malefics, to say your Mars or your Pluto or your Saturn, whatever. And uh, even your Mercury because it's your moon ruler. So anything like that, you know, it could mean that you go through these really impulsive temper outbursts and that can have you getting into problems. Be careful of heavy machinery, guns, fires, driving under the influence, uh, just stuff that uh, that's dangerous. Okay, just be careful of that. You're so swift, the way you move, be careful of accidents. Also, you have very fast metabolism and what you put gets, you know, digested quickly. But be mindful of what you eat. Digestive issue ailments can pop up. And then again, I see a direct connection to digestion and migraine. All right, Virgo rules digestion. Now, the moon is the very opposite of the, of the uh, ascendant. The ascendant, as I told you, is the Jungian mask. And with an Aries ascendant, before I move to your moon, I must say that you're the infant of the zodiac. And the shadows and lessons of Aries has to do with this infant growing up. It's not an easy process, but it has to be done. And an infant understands selfishness because it is all about self-preservation. So as eminent astrologer Stephen Forrest says, that the goal of Aries should be enlightened selfishness. You know? You are, yes, you, you will have a selfish streak, but what do you do with that? Soak in the agitating fires of Aries. They can be quite tumultuous, volatile, and uh, essentially be mindful of uh, how you question your self-worth. This could be an issue with Aries ascendants, more so with the Virgo moon. Now the moon is your private part, the yin part, the receptive part, the intuitive part, the compassionate part, the empathic part of you, all right? And um, the moon is in fall position in Virgo because it, it is exalted in Pisces, the polarity of Virgo. So it does not do well in Mercury ruled Virgo. Yet the sole ruler of Virgo is the moon. But the moon tends to veil a planet and the planet is Falcon the goldsmith of the gods that hammer and um, who hammers and shapes our souls. It creates alchemy. Vulcan is the principle of alchemy. So here you are, you're very connected to moon because 
you know, you have your moon in Virgo and Virgo is so ruler is moon, yet the moon cannot express itself in Virgo. It's too analytical, this energy, nagging, compulsive, OCD, okay, stuff like that. Uh, too harsh on yourself and others. You don't need to be, you dissect everything, uh, do bits and bits, and then you want to put it together. But oftentimes the damage is done. So that's something you've got to work through. N know when to not look at the bad and concentrate on the positive. Moon in Virgo, get the yoga bani, use that Aries restless energy and do yoga. I think that's going to be amazing for you. Breath work, very, very good. Work on uh, vagus nerve, your vagus nerve, and work on that. Now, with your moon, the moon is your mother, your childhood, how you nurture, how you were nurtured, your everyday habit patterns, how you connect, how you emote. And uh, with the Virgo moon, you're definitely about service, about helping humanity heal. Virgo is all about understanding that the Christ or the Christos principle just states within the human form. Virgo is to see the sacredness of the body, mind and emotions. But it can always, uh, and it's a very sexual energy, a lot of people don't understand it. But Scorpio and Virgo were one sign in, in the ancient times and they were broken and Libra was added. So this is repressed sexuality in Virgo that needs acknowledgement, needs uh, to be worked through. It's not something you need to ignore or put away or, or guilt trip yourself or, you know, feed into other addictions because Aries could be prone to, you know, just getting, um, moving from one thing to the other is also a sort of an addiction. So understanding that, understanding the reverence that one must have for the body, that is Virgo. Now, very methodical, disciplined, you can serve, you can heal, but you are an artist with your, you have a sixth house moon, but your sun is in your fifth house, which is awesome because sun is in rulership, your moon's in a bad position, that's your mother, so your mother may have been very critical of you, very judgment, very harsh, but sun in Leo means your father could have been very, sun's father, by the way, it's, it's your goals, your ambitions, how you project your internal key onto the world. So, with Leo in rule, uh, sun in rulership, you're definitely about creativity. Leo is the first sign of individuation ruled by the sun. The soul ruler is also the sun. So, you have Mercury as your soul ruler with Aries, Moon and Vulcan with Virgo, and with Leo you have the sun. So, with your Leo sun, you're def definitely childlike, hopefully not childish. Uh, you definitely, you definitely love the mane there. Even if too much fire burns it out, you love the mane. Virgo's digestion, Leo rules the solar plexus, okay, and the heart chakra. So it's it's a heart centered sign. It's a sign of openness, childlike wonderment, artistry. Ultimately, Leo is about providing illumination to humanity. Just as the sun uh, gives illumination to the solar system and illumines the solar system, Leo is supposed to illuminate humanity. So you could be a teacher because ultimately loads of Leos are, yes, actors, models, media people, uh, politicians, people in high power positions. It's a sign of the king. So you could be a boss in your own right. Sun is how you want the world to perceive you. But your Virgo moon is probably more introverted. I would say ambivert. And Leo, very gregarious, extroverted. Aries, very gregarious, extroverted. The, com the, the, the You feel compelled to go out and be the center of attraction. Be careful of egomania, narcissism, with your son in Leo. Fifth house Leo, you love to work with children. A fifth house son in Leo, you love to work with children or maybe even create something for children, uh, like in terms of films or a book or courses. You could be a great educator. 
The other thing with Virgo is that it actually completes what it starts, okay, but uh, Leo and Aries are not known to complete what they start. So having a Virgo moon could be great for completions. Sun and rulership, go out there and shine and uh, give your uh, wisdom, uh, convey your authentic self and inspire people to to uh, connect to their inner authenticity because both Leo and Aries are connected by this, not just by fire element, but, but by also the need to be absolutely that was a bit about Aries Ascendant, Virgo Moon and Leo Sun. I hope you liked this video. Like, subscribe and please comment and visit my website www.tinahills.com. Thank you.